going on guys it's chase welcome back to a brand new video today we're going to be following up last week's video of ranking all dlc defenders with an all dlc attackers tier list just like i said last week if you guys want me to go more in depth on these and make a very well edited video uh basically ranking them actually ranking them like one through i think we have 16 currently i'm not including oryx or yana because they're recently out but if you want me to make a video 1 through 16 ranking them uh, show these videos some support comment down below if you want it uh, just let me know and I will happily do it I just want to make sure that you guys want it before I put all that time into editing it because it will be a hefty upload but uh yeah since the coronavirus outbreak I've been put on hold and I haven't been able to go to the store and get razors so I'm growing a mustache out because I they have no razors my, my local Walmart has no razors so it's it's quite tragic I know it doesn't look great it's a mustache yeah we're gonna have to deal with this for a little bit but uh yeah let's just go ahead and jump right in keep in mind that this is my opinion uh, you guys might not agree with it you can comment down below just do it respectfully and we can have a good conversation about that but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump right in. So the first DLC attacker ever released into Rainbow Six Siege is Buck. And he is A tier easily. A tier is the best tier. Never gonna have an S tier because S tier in my opinion literally means blatantly overpowered. Like that would be like some Blackbeard uh, when he was released or Ella when she was released. I'll never have an S tier. Uh, but yeah, Buck, really, really good all around operator. He takes a lot of map knowledge to play effectively. He also takes a little bit of time to learn because of his recoil pattern, but it is manageable once you get it done. Uh, just put a little bit of time into Buck, and honestly, you will quickly see how good of an operator he is. There are some people who still think Sledge is a better pick, but I pick Buck simply for the fact that you can take out the ceiling and the floor. Uh, Sledge can really only take out the floor, so yeah, I take Buck for the verticality over sledges just more destructibility also buck has frag grenades one of the best you know secondary gadgets in the game his c8 does tons of damage as long as you hit your shots because of its high fire rate uh yeah just a lot of things that buck can do he can destroy anything in the game with his skeleton key except for castle barricades uh castle barricades are really his weakness that's why he has those frag grenades and that's why you should always run those frag grenades because there's no point in running stuns when you have frags all right next operator is going to be blackbeard and blackbeard's in a rough spot you know a lot of the community is really really good at blackbeard because they are very very good at the game as long as you can get your headshots blackbeard is honestly an a tier or b tier operator you know you combine him with someone like lion who we'll talk about later where they have to stay in their position, Blackbeard's overpowered. But a lot of the community isn't that good with him. He's a terrible solo queue operator. Sorry, he's a perfect solo queue operator. But a lot of the community isn't that good with him. They don't know how to play him that well. So I'm going to place Blackbeard in C tier. I don't like him. I feel like he breaks the game, uh, especially when ran effectively. However, he is a great solo queue operator. He is also a great operator to combine with a lot of other operators that can disorient or displace the enemies or just disrupt them in general. So, yeah, Blackbeard, I definitely see him getting reworked in the future. They've talked about wanting to rework operators a lot now, and Blackbeard is pretty annoying to deal with. All right, guys, the next operator is going to be Capital, and just like Blackbeard, I'm going to have to put him in C tier for now. Capital, just like Blackbeard, amazing when ran with the team, amazing when the person using him knows how to play him, but he's not very good at all if you don't know how to play him. He's not an operator that you're going to pick up and be able to be good with. He's a very situational op. Uh, he's not a good solo queue operator at all. If you try to run Capital solo queue, you basically just better be running recruit because there's no point in using him. Uh, some good things about Capital, though, is... He has the only smokes in the game that will detonate immediately. So wherever you put that smoke dart, it's going to detonate immediately. That way you can coordinate better. Smoke grenades have a little bit of a feast time, obviously, because they're grenades. So you can't do it as coherent as you want. He also has the ability to cut off uh, lines of sight with the smokes. He also can cut off you know, entry points to the objective once the bomb is down with his incendiary grenades. Or incendiary bolts, sorry. Or just be able to get people out of tight spaces. 
Uh, he's a great operator for area denial and flank watching. And honestly, post plant situations are where he thrives. But like I said, he's a terrible solo queue operator. You have to put the time in knowing him and learning him because he is very situational. You got to know when to use your smokes. You got to have a team, definitely, for him to be at his best. All right, so the next operator we're going to be talking about is Habana, and she is easily A tier. She's just in her own element. She can take out three hatches, which is insanely powerful on certain sites. She has one of the best assault rifles in the game. Its real only weakness is its low mag size. She gets access to the ACOG. She can detonate from wherever on the map she wants to because of the, you know, launcher. And then also she's just great all around. She can frag. She can open reinforced walls. She has stun grenades. There's just so much that Habana can do. Uh, just honestly an essential to most teams most teams definitely take a habana over a thermite really just depends on where you are but most time you're going to prefer a habana over the thermite all right guys so the next operator we're going to be talking about today is jackal and jackal is a tough one i think i'm gonna put him in b tier i feel like before his nerf he was a tier he was very easily a tier he was one of the best fraggers in the game he could search anyone out he wanted to he could gather intel very very well but since his nerf where the blips have changed and all of that and the footsteps disappear quicker or whatever that is. Uh, he's got a little bit weaker. He does have access to the C70, which is one of my favorite weapons in the game. Honestly, one of the best guns in the game. He also has access to the PDW, which is one of the most underrated guns in the game. Has a 50 round drum mag on it and it's an SMG. You throw too many shots down range, you're at least going to hit him in the head once. That's the way I look at it. Also has access to the utility shotgun secondary that Mira has that makes her so strong. You can use it to open hatches, open walls, whatever that may be. It's a great utility shotgun when you have such a good fragging weapon as your primary. And lastly, he has smoke grenades. Honestly, Jackal has such a complete kit, but I'm putting him in B tier because like I said, this is kind of like a buyer's guide. There's no point in buying Jackal because he's always banned and ranked. If you look into like playing ranked, you're not going to be playing Jackal much. So that's the only reason really he's in B tier. I want to make this kind of like a buyer's guide. And I don't feel like Jackal is the best to buy. Because we all agree that he gets banned 24-7. Alright guys, next is Zofia. And Zofia is going right alongside Jackal. If anything, Zofia definitely could be an A tier. But because of how I'm going to do A tier later, uh, I'm putting her in B tier. Zofia is just a very 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 good fragger she has good health because of her two armor uh, she has the withstand passive ability where if she gets knocked down there's no one around she can withstand and get up with one health uh, her gadget literally the concussive blast can tell you if someone's in a room because if it detonates immediately that means someone's there if it doesn't and it bounces around for a little bit that means no one's there uh, also impact grenades those are great she can open up anywhere uh, she can burn an ADS if that's needed. I mean, that's some utility to her that a lot of people underrate is that her ability to burn an ADS. You know, instead of wasting your smoke grenades, if you know that an ADS is there, just have Zofia pull out her grenade launcher and use it. It works very well. Also, something people just overlook on her is definitely her weapon. I think her weapon is one of the best assault rifles in the game. It's great for holding those tight angles because it hits like a truck. It kind of has a little bit of a slower fire rate, I feel like, but that's why it's good at holding angles. You can line up the headshots great. It has very little recoil, if any recoil at all. Just a great overall weapon. All right, guys, next is Ying, and Ying is going in D tier. I feel like this recent update to her in Void Edge honestly improved her, but I don't think it's enough to push her into the C tier category. She just hasn't have anything going for her. Her flashes are very, very inconsistent. Warden is being played more and more to counter her because she's appearing in the meta a little bit more. She hasn't had smoke grenades. When she had smoke grenades, she was so powerful. Her weapons are absolutely atrocious. Her primary LMG assault rifle thing, I don't know what it is till, still to this day, is just bad. It has such a slow fire rate. It does no damage. You have to go for the headshot. It has terrible handling. Uh, just terrible weapon choice for that one. Also, the 612 shotgun, also bad. Just an absolute terrible weapon kit. Uh, but yeah, nothing really is going right for Ying. She has a very incredibly powerful gadget, but due to the inconsistencies in this game and how inconsistent flash grenades are, 
she's not really that powerful. Next operator is going to be Dokubi, and Dokubi is falling all the way to C tier. I think when I last ranked Dokubi, she was all the way in A tier because of her powerfulness with the grenades, but they took him away from her, which is weird. I guess they decided that she was too good, so she's going to fall to C. The main reason why she's in C is I don't see her being as powerful as Jackal and Zofia, but I do see her being as powerful as Blackbeard and Capital. She has great utility. The fact that she can hack defender cams is amazing. The fact that she can call defender phones and get those roamers out of position is amazing. But the issue comes with her guns. I don't like her EBR, and the Boss G is just not good if you're not good at the game. Also, you know, the CZ-75 is probably her best point. The SMG-12 is atrocious nowadays, ever since they nerfed its recoil, and... Like I said, the removal of frags has really hurt her. She was able to call out the phones and then throw a grenade wherever she heard a phone. That was insanely powerful with Dokubi, and now she doesn't have that anymore. She lacks a very, very, very good fragging ability that I think would work perfect with her weapon kit, or sorry, her gadget, but she doesn't have it. She lacks it, so that's why she's in C tier. She has an outstanding gadget, but no weapon kit to compensate for it. Next operator coming is Finca. Finca is powerful in low ranks. If you're a very low rank player and you're just trying to get out of silver or whatever that is, go ahead, buy Finca because I'm sure that you or your teammates cannot control your recoil. That's the reason why a lot of people are in silver. They just don't have that good of aim. Finca corrects that. But the recent buff to Finca where her Spear 308 got buffed, I absolutely love. It needed it. It was one of the worst assault rifles in the game. And now it's contending for the top assault rifles, in my opinion. It's very accurate, has very little recoil, and especially when you throw the recoil boost on it, you literally won't even be going up at all. Your gun won't be going up. She also has the Sausage, which is great for rushing. She also has the LMG of the Russians, which is always great to work with that uh, recoil downgrade. Uh, what else? She can basically revive anyone on the map, which is powerful, and she can kind of act as a medic. I like it a lot. She could very well be in C tier by the end of the season, but uh, yeah, for now she's going to be in D tier just because I don't feel like she's necessary at higher ranks than Silver. Alright boys, hot take. Next operator is going to be Lion. Lion, I have recently started liking a whole lot more, and it's really because I've started playing with a team. When you play with a team, Lion is honestly still very, very broken because of how well he can force people to stand in the same spots. You drone him out, make him stand in the same spots, pre-fire the spots. Just an insanely powerful gadget because of this. And then if they move, it also reveals their location, which gives you, you know, a free headshot. Uh, he has the Vector 308, which hits like a truck. It is a great weapon, in my opinion, because it has access to the ACOG, hits like a truck, and has a decent fire rate. It's nothing like the Vector 45 at all. Don't ever think it is if you're going to be buying Lion. Also, just, I like his play style. Lion is a very good support, disruptor, op on attack, and I think he's one of the best in the game currently, especially when you combine him with someone like Jackal, who forces the enemy to move. So, yeah, Lion beats here for now. Uh, I just like him a lot, and I think he is better than Dokubi, Capital, and Blackbeard. All right, another hot take coming, maybe. I don't know if people will agree with me or not. Maverick is A tier. Maverick is one of the most powerful operators in the game, if not the most powerful operator in the game. If you know how to use his blowtorch, it is literally amazing. You can take out walls silently and then just kill people with his M4 suppress. It's a great silence operator. If you want to be stealthy and you want to go about it quietly, Maverick is great for that. He also can basically do anything you want with his blowtorch. He has maximum destruction with this thing. It just takes a little bit of time. If you're going through, you know, uh, the back hallway, the back tunnel on Clubhouse, he is very, very helpful because all he does is make that circle and then you crawl through it. Great for that. Also, he, you know, has that strategy where he can take out the top and the bottom of the reinforced wall, then have, you know, a soft breacher come along and destroy it. Also, with his new addition of frag grenades, I just absolutely love that for him. He's going to use them a lot and he's going to utilize them perfectly with his kit and gadget. He has access to the M4, which is one of my favorite guns in the game, and potentially the best secondary in the game. That pistol does so much damage, 
it's very, very great. He also has access to the Claymore if you don't have anyone watching your flank, and a Claymore is always good to have at least one or two on the team. All right, guys, the next operator we're going to be looking at is Nomad, and Nomad is also going to be an A tier. I feel like once you master Nomad, she's so powerful. She can cut off entry points to the objective. She can basically do everything Capital does, but better, in my opinion. She just is a great area denial op. She's a great flank watcher. That's what she's good at. If you're if you got a roamer on your butt, throw down her air jab. You won't have to worry about them anymore because you'll literally get a free kill because they'll be on the ground and you can just go over there, pop them in the head, easy kill. She's great for free kills. Uh, she's great for flank watching. She has the ARX, which is a great weapon in my opinion. The AK is very lackluster, but it's still tolerable if you prefer it. But all around, I absolutely love Nomad. I think she is here to stay in the meta. I think she's a very, 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 very powerful and underrated operator. All right, final hot take of the video, I believe. We're gonna be talking about Gridlock, and I think Gridlock is B tier alongside Jackal, Zofia, and Lion. She's honestly at the bottom of B tier and borderline top of C tier, but once again, I feel like she just does what Capital does, but better. She's great for post-plant situations. She's great for cutting off areas in the objective. She's great for just cutting off entry points to the objective, and that's why I love her. Her F90 is very, very good in my opinion. One of the most underrated weapons in the game. There's really no reason to use the M249 when you have this weapon. Also, she gets access to smoke grenades, which is literally part of Capital's gadget. So I think that, honestly, Gridlock, when you use her to her max potential, is just a better Capital. That's the way I look at it. Uh, comment down below if you disagree. I want to know your guys' opinions and your guys' experiences with Gridlock. I know this is going to be a super hot take that some people will disagree with. Next is going to be the Operator Nook, and I don't know what to think about Nook. Nook honestly could be C tier, even A tier, or sorry, B tier, but I'm putting her in D tier. I just don't feel like she has a place in this game right now. There's no reason to run her. They tried to give her frag grenades. It, it just doesn't work. I don't get why they she needs frag grenades, like, at all. Like, at all. She's literally meant to be quiet. Frag grenades are loud. Uh, her weapon got buffed, but it really didn't help her. It really helped Smoke more than it helped her. There's just so many things I feel like could be improved on her to make her better. I feel like she could definitely use a little bit more of a quiet boost. She isn't that quiet when you're running around, and I think that's what you need. All right, next is Amaru. Amaru is easily F tier. She's terrible. I don't buy Amaru right now. I have so many clips just rushing with Amaru because in casual, you can just rush and dominate. But in ranked, she is such a loud operator. They're going to know where you're coming from. Her weapon kit is atrocious. There's just, she's a terrible operator. Please don't run Amaru. Lastly, we have the recent operator as of Shifting Tides, and uh, it's Kali. She's going to be the last operator we rank today. Like I said, not going to be ranking Oryx because it's too soon. Kali is going to go in D tier. I'm sorry. There's a lot of Kali fans out there that love her sniper rifle, but she's not good. I, there's no reason to run her when we have Thatcher in the game. Her sniper basically makes herself very vulnerable in close range. Once you get inside the objective or inside the building in general, you're going to get dominated with her. You're going to have to rely on that CZ-75 a whole lot. So, yeah, that's why I don't like Cali. But, yeah, this is my tier list. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to smack that like button and subscribe. If you're new to the channel, uh, subscribe as well and turn post notifications on so you don't miss a video. Join the Discord link down below in the description, and I will see you guys later. Peace.